CBS reports UFO, friend, foe, or fantasy. Reported by CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. Reports of flying saucers are nothing new. From the beginning of recorded time, men have been seeing unexplainable things in the sky. And there's no reason to doubt they saw something. The question is, was what they saw really there? And what was it they really saw? The great flying saucer mystery of 1966 began here, near Dexter, Michigan, late in March. And before the month was out, flying saucers were being reported from New Jersey to California, from Colorado to Long Island, from Ohio to Georgia. Invariably, the first reports were brought in by quiet and sober citizens like Frank Manor, father of ten children, a countryman, a hunting man, a man used to wooded swamplands by night. Well, uh, first beginning, uh, we were watching television, and we have six dogs here, and they started raising a fuss, in which they never do much, so we, I went outside and give a yell at them, and as I turned around to come back on the porch, I looked to the north of me, and uh, there were, looked like a fallen star uh, radar. It was red and kind of coming down and on a 40, about a 45. And so then I watched it, and I was going to see if it landed and then maybe go down and see what it was. And uh, when it got to the top of the trees, it stopped, and a, a blue and a white light come on it. And uh, I looked at it, and I thought I was seeing things. Frank Manor's UFO remained over his swamp more than four hours. His children saw it, his in-laws saw it, residents of the area saw it, the police saw it. No one photographed it, but Sergeant Newell Schneider of the Sheriff's Office remembered it well enough to draw it. No, it uh, moved very rapidly at any speed or rather any direction it wanted to go. Why it could change and go to the right or the left or go crossways uh, without hesitating a bit. What do you think it was? Well, if they call it a flying saucer, that's what it is. Forty miles away, another swamp land and another UFO sighting. This is Hillsdale, and the girls at Hillsdale College had a night to remember. Well, when I was looking out the window with the binoculars, I guess it was about 12, I saw it, and I saw two red lights, and I saw what looked to be shaped like a pie. I could just see the front of it, and I just saw the round front, and I could see the lights on either side. And then the red light was sort of casting a glow over the whole thing, so it looked like a round disc. At first, when I'd heard the other girls talk about it, I didn't really... I believed them, yet I couldn't really make myself comprehend it because I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. But then when I saw it, I just was fascinated. I wasn't afraid. I, I just wanted to stay there and keep my eyes glued to it. I couldn't leave. I know I saw it, but... And I, I mean, I know myself I saw it, but I don't, I believe I saw it, but I can't fathom it because it seems so unreal. William Van Horn, Hillsdale's undertaker and civil defense director, also spotted the UFO and was out with his Geiger counter next day, checking a mysterious perfect circle where the UFO had been seen. Van Horn did not find any radioactivity here, but this did not shake his certainty that he had seen a hovering vehicle with two lights. Many people ask him why he did not go right up to the UFO in the dark. I'd uh, much rather be a live coward than a dead hero. And uh, with the area of uncertainty that we have here, uh, how do I know but what uh, maybe, uh, maybe there's a current, uh, an electrical charge which is being uh, radiated by one of these vehicles which would uh, uh, electrocute you if you got within a certain area of it. There was no sound whatsoever. I could not hear a, uh, a bit of sound. The Air Force sent its chief scientific consultant on UFOs, Professor J. Allen Hynek, to check the Michigan sightings. Dr. Hynek agreed that the good citizens of Michigan had seen something in the marshlands. He thought they had seen marsh gas. Frank Manor, the Michigan farmer who had brought in the first report, was caught in the middle. He was mad. Well, you can look at here. Look. Beer bottles thrown. Look at my windshield. What would you think if some of you throwing beer bottles at your house, standing out in the middle of the road screaming, uh, you nut, you fantastic, and all that? What would you think? Are you sorry now that you did tell people what you saw? Yes, I am. I am. I am sorry because uh, it, it, not that, that it, it's not the truth, but it's just the idea, the reaction of the people. They think you're a nut. Tell you the truth, that's just what they figure you are. 
And I'm not going to take it no more. I don't want nobody down in here. I, I just leave me alone. And if, and if the thing lands right there, and right there by that pump, I'd never say a word. Then he got out and talked to me. I wouldn't tell nobody. That's just the way I feel. I'm bitter and, and disgusted in the whole matter. And uh, if, if people's going to act like that, I hope one lands right in Ann Arbor, right in the middle of Detroit. If flying saucers had become a painfully closed subject to Frank Manor, they nevertheless remained an intriguing open subject to millions of his countrymen. Mr. Ford, uh, what about flying saucers? You've had some in Michigan in the past uh, week. Do you really believe in flying saucers? You've called for a congressional investigation. Dave, uh, we've had several uh, incidents in Michigan in the last uh, week, uh, incidents that uh, many reliable, good citizens felt were uh, sufficient to justify some action by our government and not the kind of flippant answer that was given by the Air Force uh, where they passed it off as a, a swamp gas. The Congress should investigate the rash of reported sightings of unidentified flying objects in southern Michigan and other parts of the country.